So, what are you waiting for? Namaskar and a very warm welcome to all the viewers and learners who are watching us live in today's Gyan Darshan session. I am Dr. Gitika S. Jhori, Faculty at School of Vocational Education and Training. Learners, our today's session is an introduction to the Office Procedures course, which is BSSI 015 under the Diploma in Modern Office Practice program. So let's begin today's session by introducing you to the course Office Procedures course code BSSI 015. So learners, the course on office procedures, it is the last course under the Diploma in Modern Office Practice program. The course uh, has been divided into two blocks, block 1 and block 2. The course majorly deals with the steps in which the activities to be performed in the office are taking place in a sequential manner. Learners, we know that every organization, they need to follow certain set procedures which will help in reducing the costs of operations, which will allow effective training of new staff and personnel. It will help the, uh, to enhance the performance of the old staff, facilitate smooth flow of work in the office between superior, subordinates, departments and so on. So we can say that uh, the yardstick to measure the efficiency of any organization, it largely depends on the processes and the procedures and the ability of its employees to follow them in order to achieve the object of the business with speed, quality, following the procedures prescribed for the purpose. So learners, let's begin with block one. Uh, I'm going to introduce you with block one now. We know that modern business is complex. Business organizations, they are undergoing rapid changes in all fears of uh, their activities. The markets are expanding, they are extending, uh, the techniques of manufacturing goods are changing and thus we can see it is becoming very necessary that the techniques of management should meet these changing um, conditions. The management techniques, uh, they have to work uh, with complex machines like sophisticated modern day computers. Now, the block uh, one, we will uh, give you the um, units, how this block has been, um, uh, you know, uh, detailed out. Unit one talks about modern office. Unit two talks about modern office management. Unit three discusses office accommodation and environment. And unit four talks about record management. So let's begin with unit one, which is modern office. Now, in our daily life, we, uh, learners, we see that you cannot think of completing your routine work without visiting any kind of office, whether you are visiting a municipal office, whether you're visiting transport office, an electricity office, a post office, any government office, or in fact, you can say a bank. So for all that matter, you have to visit an office. So we, you may categorize an office to be efficient if the purpose for your visit has been achieved with minimal possible time. But if you see that the uh, time taken by uh, a particular office is long, then you know you may definitely form a very negative opinion about the same. So here when we talk about unit one under uh, block one, you will be able to learn the meaning and concept of modern office, the changing scenario of office, what are the functions of modern office. When we talk about functions of modern office, we talk about the fundamental or the principal functions and the administrative as well as the management functions. Then here in this unit, we will also be discussing about the importance of office, what are the different kind of uh, services which are offered um, in the office. Departmentation of office is another very important thing which you will learn in this particular 
unit. Uh, when we talk about department departmentation, we see there are, there are different departments in an office uh, premises. We have a cash department, we have a legal department, a filing department, there is mailing department, there is a communication department, there is duplicating department, stationary department, maintenance department, security department. But when we are talking about so many departments, we see that the size of the office or the organization is large means where the organization or the government setup is large, you can see that the departmentation uh, uh, is in this way. But because if uh, the, sm uh, the office is small or if it is a medium-sized office, then you need not require such uh, so many departments. But still, you know, in order to uh, cater to the different functions uh, which are required to be done in the office, you still are required to have the following departments, which are the purchase departments, the production department, you have the marketing department, you have the accounts department, you have the personal department. So uh, any other kind of an office, whether it is a medium office or a small uh, office setup, at least these are the central departments which you will find in all office um, environment. Now, learners, let us move on to unit two under block one, which is modern office management. Now, we have seen that a business organization is faced with ever-changing needs and conditions. We find that the organizations are undergoing rapid changes in all spheres of their activities. Office management is necessarily a process which is used by the management to carry out their tasks in the office. Management is the task of unifying the efforts efficiently to achieve the well-defined objectives. The management in a business enterprise, we can say we have compared it to a, a brain uh, of the human body doing various functions. So the brain gives the direction and the purpose to a mass of matter. So the process of management is common to all activities of business organization. Now, in the office, you know, activities are carried out, we know, by a certain group of people. So we can say that the office management can be defined as the task of planning, organizing, guiding, directing, coordinating, and motivating uh, effort, the efforts of all the people who are working towards a specific objective in the office, which are in conformity uh, with all the objectives of the organization. So discussing about this unit, you will be able to learn uh, what is office management, what are the uh, role of the office manager. When we talk about the role of the ma office manager, we uh, take into consider consideration the functions uh, of the office manager, the status of the office manager, the qualifications of the office manager, as well as the training of the office manager, which is required to, uh, you know, undertake time and again. Apart from that, here in this unit, you will also learn about uh, office organization. Then, you know, there are certain other principles which you will learn in this particular unit, uh, which we call as the principles of organization, which are the principle of objective. When we talk about the principle of objective uh, learners, we mean that, you know, the clear definition of the objectives, they need to be laid down so that the purpose or the scope for which the office setup or the organization is set, uh, is set up has been achieved. Second is principle of division of labor. This means that the tasks or the different jobs have to be divided, you know, uh, uh, amongst the uh, employees, you know. It is not that, you know, there has to be uniformity. If there is uh, one person, we should see that the person is not overburdened or, uh, you know, uh, overexerted with a particular kind of a task. So division of labor as per the specialized needs uh, or the, you know, capabilities of each of the worker has to be demarcated. So in this way, you know, the, uh, the tasks and the jobs have to be uh, given to the particular person according to the, his caliber. Then the next is a uh, principle of unity of function, which means that all the people who are working in the organization have to work in harmony with each other so that they're able to attain the objectives of the organization. Then we talk about a uh, principle of simplicity, which means that, you know, the organizational setup, you know, should be very simple. It should not be very complex that people are finding it difficult, you know, uh, uh, to work in that kind of an environment. Whatever procedures have been laid down have to be, uh, you know, uh, spelled out in a very simple and lucid language so that, you know, the employees, you know, who are working are able to understand. Then we talk about principle of span of control. When we talk about span of control, it means that every supervisor they should have some limited number of subordinates un working under him. We cannot say that one supervisor has at least 10 subordinates un working under him because it will become 
very difficult for him to you know uh, look of uh, look uh, look at the you know uh, the tasks which have been assigned to 10 different people so if a sp supervisor is you know um, uh, you know he's uh, specializing in a particular uh, task so all the subordinates who are working under him related to that particular task have to report to him similarly there should be another supervisor who's looking after another task in that case, the subordinates working under him should be given, uh, they should be reporting to him. Not that one supervisor is uh, managing the, uh, you know, tasks and looking after the responsibilities of all the subordinates. Because if one person is looking after uh, all the, you know, uh, 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 subordinates, then it becomes, you know, there'll be a lot of confusion. Then we talk about the principle of parity of authority and responsibility. Each of the person who have been given a task to perform, they should be given the authority and the responsibility to uh, complete that task. It is not that, you know, they should be given some kind of autonomy to finish that task. At the same time, when we talk about the principle of flexibility, the rules which have been laid down, they should be, you know, flexible. They should not be rigid, you know. Uh, so that, you know, according to the um, circumstances, they are able to, you know, uh, make the changes. When we talk about the principle of efficiency or the principle of initiative, this means that whoever is working in the organization, they should be efficient enough to complete the task. Uh, they should be, they should they get the initiative, you know, to do the things. It is not that uh, whoever is the boss, uh, they can give a command, you know, to the subordinates. No, they should be given that kind of, uh, you know, freedom so that they can take some initiative um, and they can uh, go ahead with the work. Similarly, when we talk about uh, principle of continuity, it means that there should be continuity in the process. The process should not stop because uh, of, of a person who is not able to complete the task. There should be continuity in the process. Otherwise, you know, the work will not get completed on, on time. And last but not the least, principle of coordination, which means that whosoever who is working in the organization, they have to have a very good coordination, whether it is among superiors, subordinates, it is among your bosses, uh, between departments. So coordination has to be uh, very good because if the coordination is not good, then, you know, there will be communication gap. Then in this particular unit, you will also be, uh, you know, uh, knowing about the different types of organization. When we talk about different types of organization, we talk about the line organization, we talk about functional organization. Then there is line and staff organization, committee uh, organizations. So all these different types of organizations, uh, uh, the details related to them have been uh, clearly given in this uh, material. Then um, the topics which we are going to cover in this unit are also on authority and responsibility and decentralization of authority. You know, sometimes what happens that, you know, the boss, you know, has to decentralize some of his authorities to his juniors or to his subordinates in order to get the work done. So all that has been discussed uh, as far as this topic on decentralization of authority is concerned. Now, learners, moving on to unit three. This talks about office accommodation and environment. Now, the purpose of office management is to get the maximum work done effectively and efficiently. That is, maximum work at minimum cost. This is the objective of every business or every organization that you have to take the maximum work with minimum cost. So to attain this objective, the office staff must be accommodated in a good working environment. When we talk about good working environment, we mean that the environment should be very congenial, it should be very amicable, uh, there has to be coordination. Um, we should provide them with the modern facilities, you know, as far as, you know, the equipments are required in terms of computers or, you know, uh, printers, photocopier machine, internet, etc. Because if one of the uh, items or one of the equipments is missing, you know, it might hamper the uh, work of the uh, person who is doing the task. Then, you know, uh, we see that a good accommodation and well-maintained office equipment should be supplemented by proper working conditions to facilitate the working of office employees. This we have already discussed. Now, it is uh, a very well-acknowledged fact that the employees spend most, more than we can say one-third of their lives in the office. Therefore, it is very important that they are provided with suitable facilities so that, you know, they can maintain their health as well as they should have the motivation and zeal to work in the office environment. Then when we talk about office accommodation, the environment designed must be very, uh, should be designed carefully uh, so that, you know, it uh, serves as a tool for achieving the organizational objectives, uh, which is very important when we see from the human perspective. 
So uh, when you're going to go through this unit, you know, uh, you will be learning about the various dimensions and the factors uh, uh, which are important, you know, uh, uh, a, pa a part of the office management. So here, you know, we will be discussing about the principles of office location. When we talk about principles of office location, we talk about the surroundings of the office, whether your office is in the rural area or a semi-urban area or in the urban area, what are the security setup as far as the office is concerned, the transportation facility, the parking facility, all has to be taken into consideration when you are thinking of, you know, um, opening an office. Then there is uh, the next which we need to take into consideration is principles of selecting an office building. So when we talk about office building, we need to see that, you know, uh, whether we are thinking of uh, opening an office in a big building or whether the building has to be small, basically seeing the requirement of the number of staff or the number of workers who are going to work in the organization. So when we see factories or industries, we see that, you know, they have to be located, you know, um, in, in a place, you know, where, you know, there is a lot of space. But when we are talking about, you know, uh, uh, commercial offices, we see that, you know, in urban areas, the space is limited. So at least, you know, the important or the central uh, departments can be open in those particular uh, areas and the rest can be, you know, uh, taken to the semi-urban or uh, rural areas. So uh, this is another very important thing where the office layout and the types, you know, has to be... Uh, uh, then another thing when I, uh, w w what I'm discussing is the office layout, layout and the types and the principles, which means that the location of the office rooms, you know, the flow of work. So there is, there is flow of work is not hampered, then the staff requirement, you know, it is not that uh, your office has a capacity of only 100 people and you are trying to fit in more than 100 people. So then, you know, uh, it becomes very congested and the people working in the organization, you know, they are not able to have that uh, proper flow of work. Then uh, we also need to discuss about the impact of surroundings and the internal environment of the office. When we talk about this, we need to see that the office is, is airy, uh, there is proper lighting in the office, the color schemes which are util used in the office environment is very subtle, very good, so that, you know, at least you can see that um, uh, they, they look very broad. You know, the office looks very big and broad if you lose subtle colors. If you use dark colors, you know, uh, uh, it doesn't get a very good impact. Then sanitation and cleanliness, again, is a very important uh, thing which one needs to take into consideration when you are uh, opening any office. Then the rules for selecting the office furniture. What kind of furniture is required in the office? When we talk about furniture, we need to see uh, uh, the, you know, the tables, we talk about the chairs, what should be the height of the chairs, whether you require a computer table or not, the almiras, the cabinets. So all kind of office furnitures uh, or the cabinets which are required in the office environment has to be selected very meticulously so that, you know, uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, there is no clutter in the office. It is not too congested. Then apart from that, the other kind of facilities which should be provided to the office employees are in terms of your cafeteria, the library, as well as the medical facilities. So now learners, let us move on to unit four under block one, which talks about record management. Now, we all know that dealing with information and record is a very significant function of every office. Records are significant in all types of organizations or office environment. Any information which is received in or sent out of the organization, it automatically forms a record. So during the functioning of an organization, many documents are generated in its office. With whether all of them form a record, what procedure should be adopted to have a systematic procedure of record management, all has been discussed in this unit on record management. So talking about this unit on uh, record management here, you know, learners, you will be able to uh, learn the aspects related to the following topics. Firstly, you will know what is a record. As we just mentioned that it is any information generated or received by an organization that needs to be maintained to meet the financial, legal, historical or administrative needs of the organization is termed as a record. See, when we say that we are talking about record, it doesn't mean that, you know, the record is just your uh, circulation or your notifications or your notes, which you are, uh, the interdepartment notes, which is, you know, uh, been, uh, uh, you know, uh, sent to another department and so on. But there are certain very essential records which can be used, you know, um, for your legal purposes or for your uh, uh, financial purposes or as a matter of fact for historical or any administrative uh, purpose. So records uh, means, uh, you know, they mean a lot uh, uh, of importance for an office environment. 
then as i discussed that uh, importance of record will be discussed in this unit then you also need to understand the concept of filing now when we're talking about record we need to understand the concept of filing because if you're maintaining the records then filing of the records also has to take place so how this filing has to be done has also been discussed in this particular unit when we talk about filing you need to know what are the different kind of filing uh, methods which you can adopt whether it is your uh, flat or horizontal filing it is your vertical uh, filing whether you are using the alphabetical uh, system of filing you are using the numerical system of filing or you are using e filing so there are different methods of filing which can be adopted by the organization as per their requirement so now when we are talking about filing we also need to understand the indexing part of it because it is again a very uh, important part and parcel of the filing system again what are the different methods of indi uh, indexing which can be a page index or a car card index has also been discussed in this particular unit so learners uh, we have completed block 1 of uh, the course on office procedures uh, wherein we discussed about uh, uh, what is modern office what is uh, modern office management uh, then uh, we discussed about uh, the um, uh, record management and of course uh, we also discussed about uh, uh, the uh, office uh, you know the uh, the office environment and so on now let us move on to block 2 now in block 2 of this course you will be discussing about the aspects of handling mails the different type of office forms and stationery and office equipments and machines so let's begin with unit 1 under block 2 which is handling mails handling of mail whether it is inward mail or outward mail is another very important function of an office uh, and uh, in the office since the course uh, that is the diploma in modern office practice program talks about the uh, role of the secretary you know because here this entire course is for the secretaries who are working in the organization so the private secretary should have sound knowledge regarding the procedure of handling mails to be followed in the organization efficient and effective handling of mail helps a company to boost its business and have a better image of the organization definitely if you are able to handle your mails effectively and efficiently it will definitely boost the image of uh, the or the reputation of the company but if you see on the, on the other hand if you are mishandling the mails if they are not handled uh, efficiently or effectively then definitely it will cause delays and loss of business so after completing this unit learners you will basically uh, get to know uh, what is a mail when we talk about mail uh, it is a form of a written communication which is sent out or received in the organization through some agency we will be discussing in this unit about the different types of mail then here we will also be discussing uh, about the types of uh, handling of mail how you are handling the mail whether you are handling the mails electronically or in the physical format then uh, what is the procedure of handling the incoming and outgoing mails what are the different types of postal services uh, which are being uh, you know uh, Uh, there as far as the office setup is concerned the importance of speed post when we talking about government offices we really need to tell them that what uh, the speed post is and how you can uh, you know um, dispatch any thing related to the speed post then also describe the courier post and courier services so all these aspects you know have been discussed in this particular uh, unit and also i want to tell you learners at this point of time that our self learning material Uh, we have uh, we've been talking about indexing we have been talking about filing we have been talking about uh, different equipments machines with very good pictures and illustrations we have explained to you each and every um, aspect related to it so uh, you will really find you know enjoy um, going through this uh, course on office procedures because it is just not the uh subjective knowledge but we have uh, illustrated we have given you a lot of pictures related uh, to uh, all these things which you have never seen now learners let us move on to unit 2 which talks about office forms and stationery learners we have seen in that uh, whether you want to buy a flat or you want to buy a car you want to open or operate a bank account you want to enter into any kind of a legal contract you want to take admission in any school or any college or you want to file income tax returns be a part of a lucky draw or get a passport apply for a job or any kind of a loan forms are present everywhere so forms we can say they have become an indispensable way of securing the desired essential information for 
efficiently carrying out business dealings. In forms, one needs to fill up only the precise information with limited number of words. Why the precise information and with limited number of words? It will be beneficial both for the user of the form as well as the user of information. Because if the information which is given in the form is precise and uh, to the point, it will save a lot of time and energy. So that is why, you know, it is not that a form should be very uh, uh, long, you know, that you're filling up different points and points which are of uh, no use. So whenever you are even uh, designing a form, you need to keep certain uh, points into consideration that whatever information, whatever precise information is required as far as that particular form is required, just uh, uh, design it in that way. Not that you are asking just irrelevant information which is a lot of wastage of time as far as uh, both time and energy gets wasted in that. We can see that the forms are widely used in the office um, uh, environment uh, in recording the and communicating the information. We can say basically they are the basic tools of office operations. So in an office, be it purchase of raw materials or completion of tax formalities, finalization of rent agreements, application of public issues, Everything is done with the help of forms. Even when we are talking about feedback, where, where, wherever you are going, whether you are going to a hospital, whether you are going to a restaurant, you can see that people are filling up the feedback form, you know, so that they can improvise on their, you know, um, working. Even when we are talking about leave application, requirement for advance from your provident fund, even if you are filling the job appraisal, everywhere we can see that the form is required. Every form is desired, uh, designed, you know, in the office in the unique nature and it is des designed to receive the restricted and exclusive information. It is not that the form which is required in one organization, the same kind of a form is required in another organization. Except for the government organizations where we can see, you know, there is un uniformity as far as the forms are concerned. But mostly when we talk about other uh, organizations, it depends on the organization to organization what kind of information they want to, uh, you know, uh, get from the person who is filling up the form. So again, you know, it will depend on the organization that what information they uh, are requiring, you know, uh, so that, you know, it can be, uh, you know, they can process it further. Then when we are talking about uh, for, uh, forms, now we have to talk about stationery. Management of stationery in an office, again, is a very important area which is to be looked after by the secretary or the office manager. Though we have seen that many organizations are going in for a paperless uh, office environment, which is becoming a reality, no office can 100% function smoothly without the use of stationery and office supplies. At least somewhere or the other, some, uh, some uh, stationery is required. So we can say that it is again a very important duty of the secretary or an uh, office manager to ensure uninterrupted flow of uh, stationary items so that they are able to procure the material which are economical with quality and service. So after completing this uh, unit learners, you will be able to understand the meaning and significance of the different kind of office forms. You will be able to understand what are the benefits of using form, what are the different types of forms. You will be able to describe the technologies which are used with in enterprise forms, automation. Uh, you will also be able to develop an e effective stock control system. Then when we are talking about introducing new forms, you will uh, get to know how to design the office forms. Then, you know, here in this unit, uh, you will also be uh, getting to know the objectives of automated stock control system, explain the principles for better utilization and management of stationary items, and devise plans regarding purchase of machinery and its optimum use. Now, learners, coming to the last unit under Block 3, which is office equipments and machines. Now, an office, you know, now attends to clients from all parts of the globe. It is not that, you know... Uh, we are only having uh, clients, you know, in the, uh, maybe in the own country or, you know, just addressing it in the physical uh, mode. But here we are attending to clients in all parts of the globe. So we have to keep pace with the technological developments. 
uh, which are taking place in the office operations. Today, when we talk about modern office, uh, we have seen that most of the work uh, is mechanized. Uh, the routine activities are also we are trying to mechanize. Machines and equipments have become an integral part of a modern office. So besides performing the routine office functions, some machines are also used for safety and security of office operations and data. There are various uh, equipments like computer, photocopier, binding machines, lamination machines, franking machines, CCTV machines, which have become a necessity and survival for any organization. So after uh, completing this unit learners, you will be able to understand uh, what is the meaning of office mechaniz uh, mechanization, which means use of machines and equipments in office. Then it is defined as replacement of manual labor by machine operations. With office mechanization, paperwork in office has reduced to a considerable extent and a paperless office has become a reality. You will also know about office equipments and machines in detail, understand the safety and security of data with the help of data warehousing and data in, 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 encryption. So I hope learners, your today's session has been very useful wherein we have discussed about uh, the course office procedures under the uh, Diploma in Modern Office Practice Program. In case you have any doubts, you can please write to us at the following uh, email address, which is uh, dmopsovt at ignu.ac.in. Thank you and Namaskar.